I think you've got a special challenge here in the sense that it's such a Western open society. I'm sure you have multi-generation Muslims that are marrying and probably encountering very different marital problems than, than maybe would be encountered in other more traditional Muslim societies. So I was wondering, maybe you can outline some of those problems and how you cope with them. You know, certainly um, over 50% of Muslims in the state are immigrants. The moment they landed in this country, they faced certain challenges. Many immigrant Muslims are really, really shocked, and, um, and that's why that, that naturally creates tensions uh, within home as well. So I have to say sadly that as more than 50% of marriages here in, in the United States ends with divorce, that is the case of the Muslims as well. For example, when a wife in the Muslim world calls the names of the husband, that might be considered disrespectful. Uh, here in America, you know, the wife called John or Peter, that's normal. In Islam, you are allowed to have more than one wife. Do you think that Islam may view uh, men differently than maybe what American established society looks like if men? Is there something here that's viewed differently in male-female relationships? You know, first of all, I think we need to see um, the, the Islamic legal perspective on the polygamy itself. You know, when the verse was revealed, certainly there was different uh, social phenomena at the time, there was different social circumstances because Prophet Muhammad lived in Medina less than 10 years and he faced over 27 wars. So, so a lot of Muslim males died, so a lot of orphans left behind and there was no social security uh, at the time. So who, who is going to be responsible of these widows and orphans? So one of the solutions in Islam is that uh, man who is capable to have more than one wife to support not for personal reasons or ego, but to support these why, uh, widows and, and orphans, you know, it is better to marry these widows. And, and, and so the, the idea basically is social solution. At the time that it is not considered normal, at the time that it is, it is considered unacceptable socially, we cannot accept that it is Islamically allowed. Because this is America, I'm sure in your counseling or the things that are, that are happening, you must encounter situations where husbands and wives might be falling in love with other people. How, how do you deal with this in a religious sort of way? Certainly, um, it happened. It is an issue that we are facing, certainly in our community as well. The first thing to, to do when a couple come to me and talk to me about this, you know, to remind them about uh, the marriage commitment itself. That marriage is not only a commitment between two individuals, but it's a commitment to God, the Almighty. We remind them that when you marry this woman, you marry her because you choose her, you choose her on the basis of faith. You know? And that's why in Islam, uh, Prophet Muhammad reminded the person to choose her husband or his wife on the basis of four criteria. Number one is can be beauty. Number two can be wealth, can be also lineage, family lineage. The most important is uh, the criteria of faith itself, that you see her or him as a religious person committed to God. Secondly, that when you marry, basically you're becoming, you are binding yourself to one another. In the language of the Holy Quran, you're becoming one body. You become a garment for her and a garment for him. So betraying her or him is betraying your own self. How much do you advise people to opt for divorce or not to opt for divorce with such a crisis? You know, we try as much as we can to avoid divorce if it is possible. But instead of living in, in, in a hell, if that is the solution, then divorce. Um, so we, we try to remind them every possible way to solve the, the problems that they have between themselves. We don't want abuse happens also in the family because abuse is, is always in Islam is not acceptable. Whatever the form of abuse, it is mental abuse, psychological abuse or physical more probably, it is not at all accepted and tolerated in the teaching. So if divorce is the only way, then that's it. When it comes to issues of uh, people falling in love with each other, mm -hmm. How much do you offer divorce or not offer divorce in a situation like this? You know, really, it depends on who loves, who falls in love with someone else. I mean, if it's the husband, then we, uh, we try to, to talk to him separately sometimes. I had an experience where husband completely, you know, was completely regretful. You know, he remorsed. He was so sad and painful for what he had done against his wife. More of those who fall in love with others are men, certainly if I may say almost 
80 to 90 percent. Very rare that we find women falls in love with uh, another man. Uh, it happens as well. Uh, but uh, it's not necessarily the issue, uh, the case that women are more difficult to be advised when she falls in love with another, another man. Uh, it depends, I think, on the situation. It depends on the, on the situation of the couple itself, first of all, because most of the women, for example, who fall in love with other men, uh, because she, she have the problem with the husband. But many of those husbands who fall in love with other women, they don't have any problem. Just simply follow the ego. I will ask the wife if she might forgive him. You know, if there is a way of forgiveness, because forgiveness is so important in Islam, then that is the solution.